Well, because of the program we have, uh, the stack genetics, um, we can provide the best genetics you can find anywhere uh, with generation after generation stacked on top of each other. Um, this year we've got a you know power tool, Canelian Focus, uh, Upshot, several of the top sires in the breed, so uh, large sire groups. So uh, we've got customers that come back year after year. This will be our 25th annual sale. Uh, there'll be people who've there have bought it all 25 sales. So um, and. Uh, there will also be new people that, and that's what makes it fun is you get to see people that you've known for years and you get to meet new people every year that come and try your program. So we've got one of the best guarantees you'll find anywhere. Um, we stand behind our cattle uh, and that's what brings people uh, it's back. It's something I got interested in at a young age. I just was out of high school and we had a registered Angus herd that my dad started in about 1972. and and uh, I had my first heifer was out of one of those cows so I have had an interest since I was 10 12 years old so uh, started that long ago and then like I said earlier in 80 I started an AI program which we've continued through this day so well we use Angus it's a no-brainer to me because the genetics are readily available. They've got we we can identify the top genetics in them because they're they're a little more advanced than some of the other breeds. I mean, we do have balancers too, and there's nothing wrong with the Gelvy breed at all. But uh, we've come to find out if we keep the percentage on the Gelvies down around a quarter to a half, and keep the Angus influence in there on that on those cattle that we have a better cow and we also have a better feeder feeder calf so and then the straight angus uh... with the stacking of any more you can uh, you can produce cattle that are just a very balanced because and you can add docility to it now which is a big thing i get asked about a lot by producers is docility uh... epds and how calm they are so we've really worked at stacking that and i think if you look at our some of our cattle we put on the video, the heifers or the bulls, you'll see that they're all very calm and, and easy Ryan to handle. Ryan is not so. big on the computer work, so he lets me do it, and that's not a bad thing. Um, I, what I do is I get the calving books, and I put them into Ames. From, well, actually, I put them into Excel, and, that's usually, and then I have the whole group then, usually at the end of the summer, and I get them put in the Angus program called Ames. And that, in turn, can send the information on to the Angus Association through an email. And then they can send it back to us. And then we have all the information on our computer then. I, when we register something, we have to have, we give them a name. But also, it gives the data as far as who the dam and the sire are. And... Uh, then we got the birth weights, we got the weaning weights, we got the yearling weights, all of that information combines and then when we send in the DNA, the blood sample, the identity, who we do it through, plus Zotus, Zotus is the one that Angus uses, the, then that DNA data goes back to what I have sent the Ames, through Ames, I've sent the Angus Association, sent that data and then they put that together with the calf. And so anybody, if they would go onto the angus.com website, then they can, they can pull up our cattle and see all the information there. So, but we provide that to put together with the DNA. You know, there's some buyers that look, you know, that everybody has a different angle. There's some buyers just look at birth weights. There's some people, younger folks are probably more interested in the DNA enhancement. Uh, you know, I mean, older guys, I get more questions about the docility. So, but that's why I've tried to produce a balanced, balanced uh, animal. And uh, like some of the bulls we're using this year, you know, the Power Tool Bull, the Shrek Bull, uh, Safeguard, Consensus 7229, these are all top-notch bulls that are, 
that are balanced bulls though they've got they've got economically important traits for growth uh, they produce good females docility's good on them carcass is good I mean uh, they kind of catch every angle that you're looking for well the first thing you got to have is a life calf on the ground and and that's where the uh, additional angus come in because I can compare them to some of the other breeds I've tried over the years even recently I uh, went back and tried some Gelvy bulls, and, and they were good bulls, but they added 10 to 12 pounds of my birth weight. Well, first off, you have to have a live calf, so uh, that's the calving ease is number one, and then you got to have some growth. You can't have a calf that that uh, won't perform for you, so, uh, and then you've got to have some carcass traits in them, and uh, you got to have a cow that milks, so, you know, there's so many things anymore that goes into this. That's part of the reason... Uh, or probably the main reason we're going to this DNA enhanced DPD because uh, through the use of that plus the information we collect from uh, cavities to birth weights to weaning yearlings but also this DNA uh, it gives us a good picture of each animal and, and lets our buyers uh, know everything they need to know about the animal before they buy them. Well, we start, uh, we put the bulls out in a, in a pen. Of course, beforehand we video all the bulls so they don't run through the ring. We spend a day videoing all the bulls. This year may take a day and a half because we're we're going to be up substantially. We usually sell around 100, but we've grown our herd has and our quality and we're going to offer about 150 bulls this year. So um, we'll bring them out of the lots that morning. We just drive them right across the yard here, just south of where we're sitting. Uh, we just turn them out of the pens and take them over to the other pens. And, and I've got about some neighbors and about three or four helpers. There's probably seven, eight of us total. Takes us about an hour, hour and a half to sort them into their pens. And, and even at that time, if we have a bull that acts a little upheaded or any problem at all, he goes back to the pen and he doesn't make the sale. So, so we call right up until till sale time, basically. Of course, our, our program is uh, we run on summer grass, our cow calves. We wean the calves sometime in August, these calves. Uh, this year a little earlier because of our drought situation. But uh, we put them on a fairly high roughage diet. It has some corn in it, some distillers. It's got some silage. It's got a, quite a bit of prairie hay and cane and, and a little alfalfa, so it's probably, we're shooting for three to three and a half pound a day gain on our bulls. We want them to perform enough so we can differentiate between the different animals, but we uh, don't want to push them so much that we have a foot problem or, or problems, structure problems or things like that. When we so. started out sorting, um, we ended up with like 190 to start off with. Um, from there we go through and, and we're just in the alleyway and what looks good we think okay we're just going to send them on the other ones go in the steer pen. Then the next day we go out there and well we missed that one or no I think maybe we need to stick with uh, more of the AI sires or but, I mean we've got a lot of really good um, pasture bulls too but the structure you watch them walk better because when we're doing the sorting you know we just got them in a group small group and um, so it's not easy to always see but then when you get them out in the pen then you can see the structure of them how they walk um, temperament more so um, we can catch a lot of them with temperament but we we've been really fortunate we just don't have I think in our sort that we did out of all of them there was maybe two out of 230 bulls that were called because right then because of temperament and um, so there's various things that we do throughout the um, time I'll go out on the horse and ride through them you know and if you got something that just head up or I see something that just doesn't look like it fits the bill then we end up calling it so it's it's a never-ending process. Before the sale, I am the one that has done the catalog for, geez, probably all but about three or four years maybe since we started. So that, of course, starts and usually get that started in January. And then when the people get here, we have the gals at the table 
that are willing to take their name and if they have a catalog it has their name and address on it we like to double check on that um, we like to have an email if at all possible and they give them a number and then after they buy the animal with the girls get them out very quick um, they're pretty experienced at doing it now and the, we're happy to have the people helping us at the table that we have we we have the computers that we use now when we started we had a uh, papers the gals would get the addresses on all the top of the papers and then anytime I would send back who bought what and they'd have to find that paper and put it all in and now it's all through the computer and then we also use DV auction that that's where Lynn talked about the video and we'll be doing of the bulls and they are there so people can bid online also so they wouldn't have to come well, to the sale. It's, we've come a long way that's for sure. <laughs> I think we had 14 animals in our first production sale along with two other fellows we had a sale with and and it was a great thing to get together with those two guys. They're still good friends of ours so but uh, you know we evolved from there from 14 head to probably 140 or 50 head this year so uh, it's uh, and the cattle have come a long way since then. I think back to some of the bulls we s sold back then 25 years ago and they honestly probably wouldn't be good steers in our pen out here right now so there's just so much difference in the cattle and the, and the changes we've made especially probably the last 10 years we've come a long way because of the, the selection process with our cattle.